কি বলো ছু
आर्ट हाउस आर्ट हाउस प्लीज स्विच ऑफ योर वीडियो एवरीबॉडी प्लीज स्विच ऑफ योर वीडियो
everybody please switch up your video art house art house or pon of your video বুঝছো arch house arch house of your video very good morning this is the last day of our one week student induction program today we have four sessions before starting of this session i inform you that you know that we have one cell of unnat bharat abhijan under this unnat bharat abhijan we have adopted five nearby villages normally we collect the data from the villages that is survey from household as well as villages accordingly we try to provide some technical help to them under this program also we are doing some rural technology group by which if we can find some problems from the villages and if i can uh, provide some technical help as last day gm sir has told that apart from your theory you have to go with some practical knowledge by doing projects meaning projects so if we can find out some problem from your nearby rural areas and if we can go to design that type of project that financial support can be obtained from iit delhi presently we are doing some small projects like marigold mala making machines beetle leaf counting machines and others 
in that case if you find some problem in your villages or in your areas make a group two or three up to five maybe any branches can participate any years also may participate and if you can't detect such type of problem you may contact with me later on now let us come with today's session you know placement sale plays a vital role in locating job opportunities for our passing out students these sales operates around the year apart from placement this self provides soft skill development training group discussion personal interview industry training and many more you know that you are the raw material of our college <coughs> our college will provide you all the supports to make you employable but how will you prepare yourself and what are the companies to get these opportunities this is this session where our cpo mr pc ghosh he will deliver all these activities which we do regularly which will help you to math with this i request our tpo sir to start his deliberation to our students tpo sir please okay uh, thank you am i audible yes yes Uh, can you see me? Yes. Yeah, no, I cannot see you because no, your video. Oh, yes. Yes, I know you. Okay. Now, uh, uh, thank you. Thank you, my guest, uh, Professor Mondol, and uh, good morning to all the students. Uh, I will just uh, put the video on for few seconds so that you can see me, and uh, and after that I will put the video off so that I can take the deliberations. Uh, Uh, as smooth as possible. So again, uh, now I am putting up the video in off mode. Now the only the microphone is working. So let's start the session. Uh, myself, uh, uh, Mr. P. C. Ghosh. I will introduce myself a bit later. Uh, first of all, very good morning to all of you. I am really pleased to have you in our college. Welcome to College of Engineering and Management, Kolaghat. This is one of the oldest engineering and colleges in West Bengal. I think you have chosen the right college. Why I am telling this? You will come to know at the end of the session that why I am telling that you have chosen the right college. Anyway, I am working. I am uh, my full name is Prabhas Chandra Ghosh. I am working here in this. Position as TPO or Training and Placement Officer since January 2006. Frankly speaking, I would like to take introduction from each of you, but in this short period and in this online mode, it's not possible. I have to keep that for the uh, for the classes when the contact classes will begin. Then we will interact with each one of you. I like to see face of each of you. Time to interact, and we have another four years time to interact with each other, and uh, this lot can be discussed accordingly. Anyway, let me introduce me briefly. Myself, uh, Prabhas Chandra Ghosh, and I have passed out B.Sc. Honors in Chemistry from Bardon University long time back. After two years, I completed my M.Sc. in Chemistry, Organic Chemistry, from the University of Agartala. Then I got a job in Accountant General Office in Tripura, Government of India. You know, Computer and Auditor General of India under the AG job. And I worked there for one and a half years. After that, I left the job because I got a chance to. Work in a research project in the King's College, London, for a tenure of two years. I have done two years research work over there in synthetic organic chemistry. I will discuss in detail later on how we will visit face to face. After the ten end of the tenure of two years, I came back and completed my 
MBA, Master, Master of Business Administration from Jadav Sundar City, Kolkata. And immediately after that, I got a job in Holdeng Institute of Technology, Holdia, as Deputy Registrar. From there, I moved to Heritage Institute of Technology, Kolkata. Uh, and I worked, I worked there for five years and I was the founder registrar of HIT Kolkata. And since after that, since then, exactly to mention, from January 2006, I'm working here in College of Engineering Management, Kolal Hart, since January 2006 as training and students. This is my deep introduction. And anyway, I miss your introduction, of course, but we have to, we have no other option but to wait for the content classes. Now come to the main point. I think all, most of you choose the BTEC courses just to get a job after completing four years of education. I think most of you, maybe not, maybe all, may not be all, maybe few of you want to pursue higher education and research. Both prospects are there, of course, but both ways you can do your uh, career, in, build your career, either in professional jobs or in higher education, research, and even in teaching lines. But to say that, do I have any idea how, how many Indian colleges are there in, the, in India? Anyway, I tell you, more than 10,000 engineering colleges are there in India. And how many students are passing out every year? More than 25 lakh students are passing out every year as engineers in India, countrywide. How many jobs are created every year for the engineers? Maximum 5 lakhs. That means, out of five engineers, only one engineer will get a job in, a, in an organized sector as an engineer and these uh, numbers are accumulated every year. And out of these five lakhs, more than four lakhs jobs are in the software services and product companies. And rest are for core engineering branches and some machine and jobs. You keep that in mind. That means to get a job, you have to perform so well that you are one out of five. Anyway, the situation is not that bad for a college that I'm discussing later. And also, do you have any idea what's the name of what's the full form of NASCOM? N A W S C O N. NASCOM is the National Association for Software Services Companies. NASCOM. That abbreviated form is NASCOM, which is popularly known everywhere in India. And every year they do a survey. And that about was the employability of the students who are passing out of engineering colleges, all in their basis, how many of, it, of are them employable? That means how many of them deserve the job just after passing out of the college? And that's figure also very this month. This year it is nearly 25%. That means 25% Five percent students are eligible to get a job just after passing out of the college, and 75 percent students are not employable at all. What does it mean employable? Employable means those students whom the companies think will contribute to the growth of the companies and will be positively productive. Is my growth of the company and productive, and and all of you know. And as, as I'm working here in the private engineering education for the last 21 years, 
I will also know that companies recruit from campuses not only for charity. They are not doing charity. They are coming to our college, they are students, it's not the charity, it's not a social work or it's not a corporate social responsibility. It's not a shared activity. For what purpose they do recruit from our colleges? Just to add growth to the businesses. It's a purely business motive and business move. It's not, don't think that TCS or Infosys or Wipo uh, are coming, conducting campuses and they are recruiting our students, sometimes in very large numbers, sometimes in small numbers. It's not that they are doing a charity. They are coming just to grow their businesses. And they will select only those students who are employable. That means who they think will contribute to the growth of their companies. And not a single student they will keep left. If they think this student is suitable for a company, they will take the he or him or her, whatever the problem is. That means they will recruit only those students who are employable and who they think they deserve a job in their company that so that they can grow their businesses. These are the pure motive. There is no other motive. Only business. In this background, let's come to our college. On an average, Around 75% is the placement percentage since last few years in our college. Sometimes it went up to 85-90%, sometimes it comes down to 65-70%, but for the, if you go through the brochure or the placement percentage given in our website, you will see that more or less 75 students are placed. It's much, much better than the national average. And only 25% students are left unemployed, but still they can get a job later on through the college or through their own input. But till then, not a single student is left without a job, whoever passed from the college. This is one of the unique things about our college. That's what I told you, we have chosen the right college. Few students get two or more jobs also. We would like to enhance the placement percentage, but that employability, employability factors comes into play. So, to get a job, to be one out of five, you have to work hard. Like, if BTEC is an entry to a stadium, and you are the only one you are the only one who can decide whether you will watch others playing in the field and you are sitting in the gallery or you will be playing yourself in the, in the field and others will be watching. This is only in your hand. No one can give you or get you a job if you are not employable, if you don't study well, if you are not prepared. And if you think that I got to a bitter degree and job is in hand, you are sitting in a fool's paradise. You have to work hard. You have to work hard to get a job. You know that I already mentioned you have to be one out of five. Anyway, what's the corporates look for in a student to select? They don't like to have a very good student, a brilliant academics, a brilliant communications. It's not that. They need some basic things. What basic things they think? They want from the students to get selected in their companies. It's a basic concept of the respective subjects. Means you have to have a basic clear views about the subjects you are studying. If a mechanical engineer, you have to know some basics about the mechanical engineering. If you are a computer science engineer, 
if you need to know some basic things, what you have studied in the last four years, just the basic things. They don't. They know that these are the students, special students coming out of the college right now. They don't know the depth of the topics or subjects. Just must, but that basic things about the subject should be clear to them. Number one. Number two, learning ability, adaptability, and attitude. This is also very important because you know every year the technology is going growing so fast. Whatever you have learned in the second year will be totally obsolete in the fourth year. That means whatever you, when you will be passing out of the college, most of the things what you have been taught will remain obsolete, will go obsolete, and you have to learn a new thing. That's why learning ability to is the most important criteria. That learning ability, adaptability, and attitude is also one thing that's also very important. That means learning, you can pick up things very fast and learn new technologies very fast on your own or with the help of your mentors in that particular company, you are going to get selected. Number three, basic communication skill. Basic communication skill means Whatever you are thinking, whatever you are, is something is coming to your mind and whatever you know about anything, you should properly express. It doesn't mean that you have to know the Queen's English is a very good English, it's not. English is a part of communication, but it's not all. You should just convey your own thoughts in a simple words to the other team members and the clients and as it is in a diverse culture, ethnicity and multilingual global village. Now the world is a global village, it's not more, America is not very far from us technically. Within one second we can communicate something to somebody in USA from India. And these are the things what you should have, you should put your uh, thinking very clearly to the other receptive persons, right? You will be working in a team in a company, you have to continue, you have to uh, network with them, you have to talk to your clients all over the world and just you need to express your thoughts very clearly. And this communication skill is so important, I can tell you, I can guarantee jobs to those students who can read, write and speak more or less good English. I'm telling you on my with full confidence, if you cannot show anybody having a good communication skill being left out or not being getting a job that you can't show. This is my experience. You have to have a good, not only not good, but some basic communication skill you should have. If you don't have, you have to develop that. Anyway, let's come to the next part. That, what are the processes in campus interviews? Generally, this is the standard format for what I am telling. First, they take a aptitude skill, aptitude test. What does comprise of aptitude test? Aptitude test is comprising of logical reasoning, basic quantitative maths of 10th or 12th standard, basic English communication related things like grammar, uh, antonyms, synonyms, all these things, comprehensive, uh, comprehension, all these things are there in the aptitude skill. Then comes to group discussion. Group discussion, some of the companies take group discussion and some of the companies don't go for group discussion. Group discussion is taken by those companies where your communication skills should be tested very thoroughly. And only those companies go for group discussion. 
and next technical interview this technical interview is the uh, thing where your technical capability technical skill will be examined if you do well in a, a, a technically your chance of getting selected is almost 90 percent over then hr interview is there is called sometimes called business interview they check whether the particular student is suitable for their company or not not technically not knowledge wise but culturally and other uh, things are being judged here and they uh, check whether you are suitable to that here is if you go out to technical interview your 90 percent 5% work are done you are going to get selected in hr interview is just a basic formality just to check here 5% is the more or less is the failure to enhance the employability what the college takes the measures we engage experts to train students on aptitude skill interview skills and good discussion skills every year we engage one student one uh, external professor means uh, motivator come teaches you on the aptitude skill your interview skills and other related fields and we have eminent english teacher who try their best to improve student we have a state of the art communication language lab and during the aptitude skill the third point regularly company respect time mail center states are held so that you get familiar with the company specific questions and what and that the type of questions because because you know in each every company has their own testing format to equip with those testing format for any particular company we train on company specific training assignments and regular tests are held to examine how far you have improved or is your weakness just to show what analysis like thing why is your strength weakness and how you can uh, convert uh, threats to opportunities and accordingly you, they prepare yourself and you can you come to know what is your uh, weaknesses accordingly you can work on your own also in addition to that we have industry institute partnership cell industry institute partnership cell in popularly called as iitc for industry experts are the members and who organize regular workshops seminars lectures industry visit and all these things and also one more thing we have got which is very important nowadays and everybody whether the state government or the central government or any agency everybody is stressing upon this on entrepreneurship development cell we have industry incubation cell in short it is called iic here we have very here we have very uh, expert and alumni entrepreneurs and members from different industries are the members of this iic uh, few senior professors are there from the college who also Help a lot to to do the work like this. Here, what you do? Here, we we start the startup ventures. We are in a very nascent stage, but still we are working on it for the last six seven months. That if we have any business ideas and what is if has the potential to be successful in the market, we select. those ideas and we encourage the concerned students or group group of students uh, to make a startup venture and it can go up to marketing and commercialization which will help both the students and the college financially and also 
very much in economically and it's a very good option other than the getting a job in uh, corporate sectors now now what what i just actually also i just every year i have to go for a industrial training also we i and i we arrange 100% training industrial training for all the students of the college every year men mostly in summer vacation and some in winter vacation the industrial training is also very important part for your uh, bookish knowledge gets you get a, an uh, an access to the practical hands on training during the is generally held in the summer vacation for uh, four weeks where you get a hands on training in industry any big industries any good industry in west bengal around the state around uh, uh, in neighboring states we send students from the college for uh, industrial training in summer training in winter vacation we don't do centrally but those students who are interested they can go and we arrange that and last point i what i have if you just have to enhance communication skill we know for the last 10 years we are having this problem most of our students are coming from the rural background and vernacular medium that means medium of instruction is not english other and it is in either bengali or hindi in other or other languages most of our students profile are like this and you need to work upon the to improve the communication skill uh, properly to get a job or to do research work or higher education or anything you are going to do communication skill is very important without this you cannot survive anywhere in the world and just to uh, develop your improve your communication skill you should read english newspaper regularly number 2 point talk to each other in english whether in hostel or in college or you are interacting with the teachers number 3 please watch english news channels that may be national international whatever it is if you just feel, if you follow these three steps automatically your communication will improve and you will be more confident and there is a better success rate is achieved with this improvement of communication skill anyway uh, i have to stop today i as i told you we have four years to interact with each other and we will discuss a lot about all these things in detail but i believe if you work hard if you work hard from the college side together we can achieve anything nothing is impossible thank you so much wish you all the best and i am looking forward to meet you each one of you in the college very soon after this pandemic problem thank you so much it's my pleasure to talk to you all the best thank you so much thank you professor mondal and all other my colleagues and wish all the students the very best in the life thank you so much thank you thank you mr ghosh thank I you for all i hope you have covered all the aspects of placement your guide if the students follow i hope the students will be employable they will work in a good company or they will go for higher study but the thing is important when you are going to get a job or working in a company you have to interact with your bosses your colleagues or if you are a boss you have to talk with your subordinates or if you are go, going to a research institute there you have to contact all these faculty members as well as your friends then the topic comes which is very important there which is universal human value that is uhb which is mandatory curriculum of the aict it has been made mandatory for all the students it is not that you will learn the uhb first time the uhb is 
play plays a important role in the life of human at various stages including in your education as well as career it has been started from your childhood from your home with your parents then your brothers sisters your neighbors then in your primary school secondary school high secondary school now you have come in the higher study in the technical institutions so everywhere this universal human value exists now our professor control day professor of humanities will share you about the universal human values this is the systematic approach so that you will get some views of him definitely you will learn all these things in your curriculum now i request professor control day to share his views about universal human values to our students please professor day thank you sir i hope the screen is visible to you people yes it is coming yes we can see we can it's see okay. it's okay okay yeah. so good morning venerable director sir registrar sir chairman sip committee learned faculties and other dignitaries and of course my dear students so i am chanchal day assistant officer of department of humanities so i'm here to give you a brief introduction about the universal human values and professional ethics dear students first of all i welcome you to cmk family since inception our college has given a lot of impetus to inculcate human morale and professional values in the students also today in the span of more than 20 years the alumni of cmk are known for the integrity honesty professionalism in the industry and academia so in its 49th meeting of uh, aict council that was held on 14th march 2017 a package of measures were approved for further improving the quality of technical education in the country and this is articulated in the aict model curriculum as well so universal human values in the student induction program provides the underlying vision for human education for the development of the full potential of human being and a human society which is just and equitable so the goals of this student induction program is to becoming familiar with the ethos and culture of the institution that is based on the institutional culture and practices exposure to a holistic vision of life based on the larger national and human good which also includes the well being for all and learning a creative skill in the arts to express the larger vision of life that can be painting or music or any other thing that can help you to uh, to build a holistic approach towards life along with your studies and a healthy lifestyle and ethical professional discipline like getting up early sleeping on time contribution to the subject to of study is all the good habits that makes us a good human being and overcoming weaknesses in some essential professional skills like if somebody is weak in mathematics if somebody is weak in communication so they need to build their aptitude in mathematics they need to build their language proficiency skills and and also the skills which are required to be successful in the professional life that can also include the typing skills and all other skills that are necessary to be successful in the job so what are the basic or the foremost objectives of universal human values it helps the student to see the need for developing a holistic perspective of life to sensitize the students about the scope of life individual family and a society as a whole and it also strengthens the concept of self reflection it also helps to develop more confidence and commitment to understand learn and act accordingly so while we teach universal human values the methodology is that that a self reflective 
methodology of teaching is adopted it facilitates the understanding through self exploration and there should be a constant form of dialogue between the faculty and the student and it opens the space for the student to explore his or her role value in the aspects of living as an individual as a member of a family as a part of the society or as a unit in nature through this process of self exploration students are able to discover the values intrinsic in them so human values are closely related with human life so no human life is possible without these values so human values are set of consistent behaviors and measures that guide human beings in doing what is right and acceptable by the society they attract dignity respect and appropriateness among people human values are used to set laws in most cases human values are also a people's beliefs feelings and attitudes towards things situations or other people basically we can say that human values have an inherent energy and dynamism these values do not follow the laws of physical science they cannot be depleted normally when we spend energy our resources we become drained of that energy to the extent of our expenditure but human values the universal human values multiply as they are applied used expressed and acted out they benefit both the giver and recipient so the five essential human values which can be found in all cultures all so time all societies are that you can see that truth that is satya the right conduct that is dharma that is love that is prema peace shanti non violence ahimsa these values are eternal in nature they are eternal essences which elevate human life to its highest expression its highest capacity so the truth if we talk about truth in detail so the desire to know the truth has prompted mankind to ask some of the great questions who am i what is the purpose of life how can i live fully in the present moment learning to speak the truth is a first and vital step in the formation of a strong character voicing an untruth is an anti social act and causes confusion in the mind of both the speaker and listener and it leads to anti social behavior as well so telling lies hurts ourselves as well as others in a subtle but a very real way the right conduct if we talk about that is information is received through the five senses that is smell taste sight touch and hearing when this information is referred to the conscience the resulting action will be beneficial every action is preceded by a thought if the thought is consciously seen and noted it aims to assist and is unselfish the action will be good for oneself and others if our minds are busy or we are daydreaming the actions may be useless clumsy or harmful to both ourselves and others as well if we talk about love this it is not an emotion okay it's affected by the subconscious mind it is a spontaneous pure reaction from the heart it is a power of love which causes one person to wish happiness for another and take pleasure in the well being a beneficial energy is directed towards the other person as the energy flows through our own body first it also enhances our own health when we talk about the shanti the peace it is when we smile it shows that we are happy we are contented contentment is gained when we cease to want to give ourselves 
all the apparent good things conveyed to us through our five senses. Inner agitation stops and we are left feeling peaceful. It is rightly said that when there is peace in the individual, there will be peace in the family. And there is, when there is peace in the family, there will be peace in the community. In order to learn self-esteem, calmness and freedom from anxiety are necessary. Nonviolence, when the, when the first four values are practiced, there is peace, there is action or right, and life is lived without harming or violating anything else. It would not be uh, exaggerating to say that it is the highest achievement of a human living and encompasses respect for all life living in harmony with nature, not hurting by thought, word or deed. Basically, there are uh, two as aspects of nonviolence. These are psychological, which includes compassion for one and all and social, where we appreciate all other cultures, all other religions. At the same time, we also care for the environment. So what are the two main approaches to human values? Basically, the two approaches can be classified into the direct method or the intercurriculum and extracurriculum method. What do we understand by this direct method. There are various activities that are done in schools and colleges and educational institutions like the thoughts of the day, the stories, the value based songs which inculcate a good values in us like patriotism and the various activities which are essential to make us happy, to make us uh, to inculcate the values like compassion and good things in us. And when we talk about the intercurriculum and extracurricular method, it means that every organization, every educational institution, every school also organize various clubs like nature club, adventure club, literature club in the institution. In our college also, we have got debate club and various other activities like NSS and NCC, okay, which is there for the personal growth and helps the individual students to clarify their own thinking to personal experience, to express their ideas and reflect upon and modify attitudes. This will also help the students in a group to know each other as individuals grow together in a group and it deepens the relationship and learn to tolerate the differences of each others as well. When we go for tours and visits to the nature or historic monuments, temples, factories, it also gives us a very good perspective of our life. Moreover, here there is also provision when we conduct the student self-government or mock parliaments. Students will be very happy to know that our college takes a very formative approach in conducting the parliament, mock parliament and other such activities which inculcate decision making skills among the students. Moreover, we have also done various other uh, activities. Certain activities are very important to inculcate these universal values in us. So now the most important thing that comes into play is professional ethics. So the first thing is that, what do we understand by profession? A profession is a vocation founded upon the specialized high educational training. The purpose of which is to supply objective counsel and service to others for a direct and definite compensation. Professional ethics encompass the personal and corporate standards of behavior that are expected of professionals. Even these professional ethics is concerned with one's behavior and conduct when carrying out professional work. It is codified and varies across different cultures. 
professional ethics is the i would say ethical norms values and principles that guide a profession and the ethics of decisions made within the profession moreover we can say that these professional ethics okay helps us and gives us certain set of broad principles that are derived in turn from a spectrum of values which are arrived at after deep philosophical reflection on the nature and role of the profession in the life of mankind so what are the components of professional ethics okay you can see in your screen the honesty integrity transparency accountability confidentiality objectivity respectfulness obedience to the law are some of the basic components of the professional ethics if we talk about honesty it refers to a facet of moral character and denotes positive virtuous attributes such as integrity truthfulness and straightforwardness along with the absence of lying cheating or theft and if we talk about integrity it is that concept of consistency of actions values methods and it is regarded as the opposite of hypocrisy that it regards the internal consistency as a virtue so transparency is a general quality it is implemented by a set of policies practices and procedures it allows citizens to have accessibility usability utility informativeness and auditability of information and process held by centers of authority accountability is a uh, is 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 that is a kind of a word that we often used synonymously with answerability or liability it is the acknowledgement and assumption of responsibility for actions products and policy and be answerable for the resulting consequences it cannot exist without proper accounting practices so confidentiality is an ethical principle of discretion associated with the professions that can be medicine that can be engineering that can be anything that demands specialized skills and objectivity is a principle of high professionalism like when there will be a some kind of something that is very concise very specific in nature and respect gives a positive feeling of esteem for a person and a conduct representative of that esteem respect can also be specific feeling of regard for the actual qualities of the one that has to be respected rude conduct is usually consider to indicate a lack of respect disrespectful okay so law is a set of enforced rules under which a society is governed law is one of the most basic social institution and one of the most necessary also the law thus establishes the rules that define a person's rights and obligations the law also sets penalties for people who violate these rules so law is a system of rules and guidelines which are enforced through social institutions to govern behavior so ethics and uh, values in engineering profession plays a very important role so engineering is transforming science into useful products for human comfort engineering is something that engineers do and what they do is going to have profound effects on others ethics in engineering there is the ability as well as responsibility of an engineer to judge his decision from the context of the general well-being of the society it is the study of moral issues that confront engineers and engineering organization when some crucial 
decisions have to be taken. The various professional engineering bodies like IEEE, ASME, etc., have evolved comprehensive ethics codes that are relevant to the respective profession based on the rich experience of their members. Some of the ethical standards in engineering are influenced by various factors like it is called that engineering as an experimentation for the good of mankind and it's a notable factor involving far-reaching consequences. Ethical dilemmas make engineering decisions relatively difficult to make. Risk and safety of citizens as a social responsibility is a prime concern of an engineer. Technological advancement can be very demanding on the engineering skill in the global context and moral values and responsible conduct is also going to play a crucial role in the decision making. At times, there is often a debate between the model and ethics. So moral is something that refers only to personal behavior. It also refers to the aspect of human action. And there are social conventions about what is right and what is wrong conduct. Whereas if we talk about ethics, it involves defining, analyzing, evaluating and resolving moral problems and developing moral criteria to guide human behavior. Critical reflection on what one does and why one does it refers only to professional behavior when we talk about ethics. Even ethics can be microethics and it can also be at macro level. So microethics basically deals with some typical and everyday problems which play an important role in the field of engineering and in the profession of an engineer. Whereas if we talk about macro ethics, it deals with all the societal problems which are unknown and suddenly burst out on a regional or national level. So what are the general criteria to become a professional engineer? Along with attaining the standards of achievement in education, job performance, one should have a integrity, which, is, which acts as a bridge between the responsibility in private and professional life. Compromise in a negative sense, we can say that it means to undetermined integrity by violating one's fundamental and moral principles. In a positive sense, however, it means to settle differences by mutual concessions. And if you talk about the aspects of honesty, that can be truthfulness, where we have, where we should meet the responsibilities that should concern the truth telling. Trustworthiness, that means meeting responsibilities concerning, uh, refers to the various uh, uh, methods which can generate trust and self-respect when we talk about it is generally a moral concept refers to the virtue properly valuing oneself and if you talk about self-esteem it is known as a psychological concept means having a positive attitude towards oneself even if the attitude gets excessive or otherwise unwarranted so there is always a scope of the code of conduct. The code of conduct is all going to help engineers to have a set standards of behaviors. They act as guidelines of their behavior. It helps to create workplaces where employees are encouraged to make ethical implications. So there are various codes of ethics have been given by the societies like American Society for Mechanical Engineers, Institution for Electric and Electronics Engineers, that engineers shall hold a paramount the safety, health, and welfare of the public in the performance of their professional duties. Engineers shall perform services only in the area of their competence. Engineers shall issue public statements only in an objective and truthful manner. Engineers shall build their professional reputation on the merit of their services and shall not compete unfairly with others. There are various social responsibility 
to uphold his ethical values like the public safety and uh, compliance with the social order. Okay, engineer shall abide by the laws of the land in which the work is going to be performed. They should uh, respect the local customs, human values. Moreover, they should also look into the matter when there will be environment protection and sustainable development. Because engineers shall strive to protect and maintain clean, healthy and safe environment. Sustainable development to comply with the statutory requirements. So it is a responsibility to maintain high standards of professional quality. Because development of uh, technical and managerial skills is very necessary. At the same time, they should also undertake assignments where professionally competent engineers can only be recruited. Okay, engineers shall perform service only in the area where they have the technical competence. Engineers shall seek to work through fair and proper methods and take and should take the full responsibility of the tasks that are undertaken by them. Moreover, there should be proper verification of the documents. Okay, they should approve only those designs which safely and economically meet the requirement of the client and shall not approve any engineering document, something that they consider to be unsound. Lastly, before concluding, I would like to quote the words of Mahatma Gandhi that your beliefs become your thoughts, your thoughts become your words, and your words become your actions, and your actions become your habits, and your habits become your values, and your values becomes your destiny. That's all from my side. Thank you. I would request Professor Deepak sir to take the proceedings further. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Dev. We have discussed the moral values, value and ethics, universal human values in lucid manner. I hope our students have understood most of the things. I understand as we are in the society, all the processes comes under human values. Before going to be an engineer, we must be a good human being. And I hope if you're working in a good company, you are earning more money, more dollars. But before that purpose, before that job, you must be a good human being. It may be useful in your home, outside the home, in the society. Thank you, Professor De. Now I go to the next proceedings. As you know that, Apart from our curriculum, we have to go with some extracurricular activities. You know, nowadays all the subjects are interdisciplinary. You have to show your capability, not only in curriculum. Apart from your curriculum, you have to show some extracurricular activities. So here in our college, we have NSC Center as well as NSS Center. Now, about the NCC Center, our professor Aditya Singh, Assistant Professor of Mechanical Engineering, will discuss about the NCC. So I request Professor Singh to start your deliberation. Professor Singh, please. Uh, Aditya, you are in mute condition. Unmute yourself. Your screen is visible. Oh. Yes. Am, am I audible? Sir? Yeah, yeah. Okay, good morning to all of you. So, I am assistant professor in the department of mechanical engineering and I am also associate NCC officer of the college. So, I welcome you all to this college. And today I am going to tell you or give you introduction about the college NCC. Okay, so what are the benefits of NCC? Why NCC is necessary? and how you are going to participate in it. Okay, so let me begin. So first, the aim of NCC is to develop character, comradeship, discipline, and provide you a secular outlook, the spirit of adventure, and ideas of selflessness service amongst young citizens. 
Further, it aims at creating a pool of organized, trained, and motivated youth with leadership quality in all walks of life who will serve the nation regardless of which career they choose. So let me tell you first thing that those students who choose this line or MCC, they have to be very selfless because maybe it can happen that whenever our society is in any kind of problem, the first people or the volunteer who is going to be called, they will be you. So MCC is the biggest volunteer group of the country. Okay. More than 10 lakh students has already been a participant of NCC. They are NCC cadet. Now, let me tell about the training. What kind of training we do provide under NCC? So in NCC, you are going to have two types of training. One will be in-house, means the training that will be provided inside our college campus. That will be your drills, weapon, constitution, disease, map reading, shooting, and miscellaneous. So what are these things? So I hope everybody is aware with drill. Whatever drill you are seeing about among the army people means uh, like left, right, or die mode, buy mode, all this comes under drill. In Republic Day Prayer, you will see a lot of drill among the army people. Okay. So those kind of drill will be taught to you. Then few weapons will also be given to you and you will be provided some type of weapon and they will be training you about those weapon then about constitution of our country what the right the constitution is going to provide you then they are also going to taught you this then different kind of diseases how you are going to prevent yourself from getting any kind of diseases then map reading and shooting and some other kind of miscellaneous activities will be held inside our college then outhouse training that is your camp training outside we are going to have a lot of camp that is generally organized most important camp is your annual training camp. It is most of the time required to provide you or to pass your NCCC certificate. You have to attain a minimum of two camps. Okay. So in this, you know, all the students, it is mandatory to at least attend any of the two camps. That is your annual training camp or combined annual training camp. Apart from this, those students who will be selected they have to attend the centrally organized camp. These centrally organized camp are the camps from where students selected throughout the country will be participating. They are centrally organized. Maybe it can be held in Delhi or it can be held in Jaipur. Like this at a particular place, these camps are organized. And you know, annual Republic Day camp, then Prime Minister rally, all these camps are very prestigious thing. Those students who participate, who are able to participate here, they have a huge credit with them always okay then there are some other camps like social service and community development camp then there is youth exchange program and adventure based learning and sports so we are going to provide you some opportunity uh, regarding adventure also so there is some chances of having participating in some kind of trekking activity rock climbing activity this kind of activity will also be there then Annually, there is only sports that is held among all the NCC cadets. Okay, so all the battalions of NCC, they are going to centrally organize one sports competition where you can participate at the national level. Now, annual training camp. These are the most important camp because it is mandatory to attend two camps to get your NCC certificate, to pass your NCC course. So these are held within the state under the ages of the directorate so if you are in our college so you have to attend this camp and this camp will be held nearby to your location then we are going to have centrally organized camp so in centrally organized camp we are going to have national integration camp then leadership camp and thal senic camp in thal senic camp what happened you will be attached to a particular army unit okay then everybody knows about annual republic day camp so in a particular state, there will be few students who will be selected so, and they will be sent for particular kind of training and they will be participating in the annual Republic Day camp that is held on 26th of January in Delhi. And, and the next day of that Republic Day parade, then you have to, you will get a chance to meet Prime Minister also. So there will be one Prime Minister rally that is also held in the month of January. 
So approximately 3,000 candidates participate in this rally. So among 10 lakhs candidates that we have, only 3,000 are been selected. So it is a very tough competition. Okay. Now attachment training, as I have told you, there are many army units, Indian Military Academy, then Officer Training Academy and Military Hospital, mm -hmm. where you can get a chance mm -hmm. to attend the camp. Then there will be one youth exchange program where uh, for youth or NCC cadets from our country, they will be sent to some other country and the NCC cadet of those country will be coming to our country as, a, as this kind of youth exchange program. Okay, so it is also a very tough competition in our country, 10 to 15 students are yearly sent for this youth exchange program. And this is your adventure based learning where you will be having mountaineering expedition, all India trekking expedition, camel safari, parasailing, para basic course, sailing expedition and cycle and motorcycle rally. So if you are lucky enough, you will get a chance to participate in this kind of adventure based learning also. So already I have told you that ANSYS is going to organize annually the sports competition, whether uh, it will be football, hockey, shooting, in whatever in, uh, interest you have, you can participate in this kind of competition. So what you are going to get from NCC? From NCC, you will be getting either B or C certificate. So B certificate is for uh, first year student. Those who are going to be pass out in the second year, they will get the B certificate. And the most important certificate will be C certificate because C certificate is going to give you a lot of privileges okay so what are those privileges that you are going to get from c certificate that we, we are going to discuss so after a course of three years you have to appear for an exam and then you will be eligible to get this c certificate so see what are the advantages of getting this c certificate so 32 vacancies in every regular course of indian military academy are reserved for ncc c certificate holders who have passed out cds and have declared successful by the service selection board so there will be a vacancy of 32 only for the NCC cadets. Then the most important here only NCC cadets are eligible to apply. And it is a special entry scheme which our short service commission in Indian Army to graduates with 50% aggregate with C certificate. So you will be deputed for training at the officers training academy Chennai if you have the C certificate. Then in Navy, there is a vacancy of six uh, NCC cadet per course. You are not required to give any written exam directly. You will be called for interview. And Indian Air Force, 10% in all course, including flying training courses, you have the reservation. So you do not have to again appear for any written exam. Directly, you will be called for SSB if you are having NCCC certificate. Then at some other places also like paramilitary, you will be given 10 bonus marks. Then in industry, some uh, industries are preferring only NCC and C certificate holders for their jobs. So even if you are applying for private job, if you have the NCC C certificate, you will get some kind of preference. Now, if you can see, these are some of the pictures of our college NCC. Our college comes under 55 battalion NCC Tamil. Okay, so our battalion is 55 battalion. So from since last one year, we are continuously giving training to our college NCC cadet. So a camp was also held on in our college. So if you all, anybody is interested to join NCC, so maybe in the month of December when the college is going to open, we are going to have uh, 30 vacancy for this year, first year student. Okay, so we will be conducting a screening of the candidate who are interested in NCC. And then finally, from the battalion, uh, our CEO sir will be coming and they will be shortlisting all the students who are interested in this NCC. Okay. So if you are interested, you can contact me. This is my contact number and this is my email ID. So, but the thing is that I want to say, if you are really interested in NCC and in army culture, 
then only you should join ancc otherwise you if you uh, do not have any interest then it will become very much difficult for you to do the things okay so if any doubt any question you can ask me now so thank you uh, professor aditya singh okay sir thank you uh, any queries may be discussed during the opening of college uh, but it is correct that we are providing all the supports for ncc so there should not be any problem if you join to ncc now i request professor shiva maithi professor of electronics and communication engineering for her deliberations on nss now over to professor okay thank you sir uh, good morning everybody most welcome to all and to good morning everybody most welcome to all today i am giving the basic idea about nss national service scheme in 2019 our college got a permission for opening key self finance nss unit one team member was formed including some faculty members and some technical assistants and from all departments i am the program officer of nss unit now the national service scheme is an indian program sponsored by public service program conducted by the ministry of youth affairs and sports of government of india popularly known as nss every year nss day is observed on september 24th across india the national service scheme was launched in 1969 the birth centenary year of mahatma gandhi in 37 universities involving 40000 students now i presenting you the nss song नहीं दे रहा है क्या सुनना मैम कुछ सुना ही नहीं दे रहा है उनको 
हेलो हेलो लिपसिंग देख रहा है कोई कोई सॉन्ग प्लीज कंटिन्यू ओके मैं मैं कौन सा सुन रहा हूं एक्चुअली साउंड इज नॉट यू कैन सी ओनली लिरिक्स आल्सो देयर इज नथिंग अ सिंगल बिट ऑफ साउंड साउंड इज नॉट कमिंग मैडम प्लीज स्किप इट Sound is not coming. Please keep this part. Now, what does NSS means? NSS means the National Service Scheme. The National Service Scheme is a Central Sector Scheme of Government of India, Ministry of Youth Affairs and Sports. The motto of NSS is "Not me, but you." Now, what do we do in NSS? The NSS volunteers generally work in villages, slums, and voluntary agencies to complete one twenty hours. of regular activities during an academic year as per the fundamental principles of national service scheme a volunteer is expected to remain in constant touch with the community now how can we join the nss students can join the nss scheme by registering themselves via the confirmed program officer how that they must be of a bona fide university college or school the nss is a voluntary scheme and the students can enroll themselves from the year standards onwards what is nss and its benefits national service scheme nss is beneficial to both students as well as the society in various different different means nss helps the student to grow individually and also as a group it makes the students confident develop leadership skills and gain knowledge about different people from different was in life now there are some important nss days yes here i'll give you the list of important nss days among these we celebrate few days in last year say suppose january 1 to 7 road safety week january 12 national youth day birthday of swami vivekananda january 25 National Voters Day, January 26, Republic Day, January 30, Anti-Terrorism Day, March 8, International Women's Day, April 7, World Health Day, May 21, Anti-Terrorism Day, May 31, World Number Tobacco Day, June 5, World Environment Day. June 26 International Day against drug abuse and that then important nss there are so many nss day throughout the world uh, throughout the year 
but among which we last year we celebrate few of the and in our college we uh, here we show you the some um, uh, some uh, events we conduct such as blood donation camp and uh, tree plantation stop water uh, waste of water keep environment clean yoga program etc few of them just i show you some some, some uh, image here we celebrating the mothers day on 30th january 2020 in front of our first year boys hostel just i show you that image and this image indicate the stop wasting of water and keep the environment clean in our hostel and hostel surroundings area uh, our students will uh, perform that activity and then mainly environment say environment means what environment means all living and non living things found in the natural surroundings such as land air water plant animal including human beings natural environment play a great role in the existing of life on the earth so we need to control our environment or protect our environment from different pollution protection of different pollution such as air pollution so we stop polluting the air and uh, here i show you the one picture due to the air pollution uh, from the primary cause of air pollution due to the high rate of fuel consumption due to transport cooking other domestic and industrial activities so we release a large amount of say sulfur oxide which uh, in atmosphere it will be created lot of harmful for different animals so here i indicate one uh, figure picture which indicate the effect lot and now need to which will protect our uh, environment we need to plantation plant uh, huge number of plants in environment so tree plantation day also be there and except that uh, in our university including in our uh, regular academic curriculum some acti mar mandatory additional requirement activity included forcefully by which we are motivated uh, doing some social work such like that plantation blood donation and uh, other such as activity where in different activity has different marks also be there by which we can get score some marks and which is directly included our mar mark mar marks okay and uh, with the help these marks help to get the uh, btech honors degree already mentioned our uh, professor uh, dilip gain sir that day okay so tree plantation also be required so everybody must be very interested to do that and to save our environment our environment to save uh, and if save our environment means ultimately we save the world okay so uh, so i motivate you uh, you do the lot our works in our surroundings to maintain clean keep clean environment protect our environment from different type of protection noise uh, different type of pollution noise water air and so many types of pollution this is our role and this is our duty to do that so i request and suggest all of you to uh, everybody to do that and uh, and it will be helpful to uh, you because we, if we uh, together are not doing something we cannot improve ourselves uh, we cannot improve our surroundings so i request and suggest all of you to do this and uh, all our initiative for doing any type of uh, social service scheme social service work 
um, not only tree plantation, blood donation, and if organize different types of activity uh, every day. So um, I suggest and request all of you, if you are uh, those are interested to join the NSS uh, group, uh, they by to my mail email ID they will contact with me and every a uh, class every year there is some there is some um, representative for nss team and uh, we collect the other students name by through their uh, class representative so those are interested to join the nss team they can uh, contact with me by uh, today in this way uh, in this way, we, we can join. Uh, so, um, and if you have any query or um, or doubt, you may ask. I will try to uh, solve that query or doubt. If you have any doubt or query regarding this NSS. Uh, thank you, ma'am. Maybe these queries can be discussed later on uh, by okay. mail ID or by contacting you, or when the class, physical classes will start, then we will contact you in the college. So now uh, we are coming to this uh, closing sessions of this student induction program. Before concluding speech by Professor Nira Konar, uh, I can remember that at the first day we have given some introductory speech about the student induction program. What is the basic purpose of that type of program? Why AICP has made mandatory for uh, to organize this type of SIP? So I hope you have got uh, maybe a little bit from this SIP. I request the students. Uh, what is the take away from this SIP? If you tell, say, by some lines, two or three lines, we'll be happy enough. So anyone who is interested, please unmute yourself and tell a few words. What is the take away from this SIP? Yes, anyone interested, please unmute yourself. And when sir is saying what is the takeaway, he means that what have you learned? What have you gathered? What are the important things you have learned about in the last five days, which you think will help you? In brief, okay? In brief, we would like student feedback. I hope you are filling up the student feedback every day. But apart from that, please speak. Yes. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, ma'am. Yes. Uh, myself, Rahul Kishorpa from Jamsipur, Jharkhand. OK. Your stream? My stream is yes. OK. OK, Rahul. Please, please start. So uh, when I uh, joined the Google Meet uh, in the day one, there were some introductions and welcomes from uh, your side. Mm -hmm. The teachers welcomed us. And uh, it was uh, means uh, just like an introduction to us about the colleges and uh, the staff members. And uh, uh, on, that, on that day, the DG sir only told that uh, the conversation between Ramakrishna and mm -hmm. Swami Vivekananda. Yes. So that that was a bit important for uh, us uh, in that conversation. That we means uh, it tells that uh, if we are uh, aiming something, then we should always. Uh, um, actually, I am not so much <laughs> prepared for speech. So uh, no, just in ordinary, so, ordinary yeah. simple words. Rahul, speak. What do you want to speak in simple words? No issue. Speak out. Yes. So, uh, the conversation was uh, very important uh, uh, um, as uh, it uh, makes us to understand that uh, if you are aiming something, then directly go for it. And uh, uh, you have to jump the hurdles between them. Means, yes. uh, uh, if you 
uh, have started means uh, we started for uh, means uh, uh, the dreams uh, you see and the target you uh, acquire means uh, uh, the dreams are different and the target is different uh, yeah. means uh, yeah. means uh, you at the day by day dreams things means uh, you can't stick uh, to a uh, to a very small region of dream but the target should be specific yes yes you should be focused right yes and uh, uh, in the day had uh, alpana alpana ma'am yeah alpana ma'am i apala ma'am apala chatter ji yes apala apala ma'am told about his sanskrit slogan that uh, kaku chesta and bako dhyanam and uh, kaku chesta means hard work and bako dhyanam means focus but this focus should be uh, specific means uh, that bako dhyanam bak means the crane crane is focused on a big faces not the small faces uh, so means uh, it is like that we should uh, overcome all the small small difficulties and mm -hmm. we should directly hit to the uh, main target of our life and uh, for this we need hard work as well as uh, hard work with smartness yes means, uh, uh, um, and many more thing uh, she, she uh, told on that day, the alpahari and the green the greater that if we don't refer zone then uh, we could not the beauty of the pablo picasso and uh, it made us motivated sir also told about the world toilet day uh, some stats about world toilet day and our uh, four abs uh, finger uh, fluid field flies these are uh, told by cao sir on that day third and uh, day fourth was uh, specific to the btech honors degree and uh, the mocks uh, explained by dg sir it was also very much uh, means uh, uh, in important information given by him and uh, the mocks was quite uh, uh differentiated in many weeks like that uh suppose a week of uh, means uh, the courses are uh, different uh, durations but uh, uh, on that day i couldn't uh, actually uh, understand what uh, which will which course will be the best choice means the three week uh, one yeah four week one yeah eight week ones and uh, that was a uh, very conflicting in my mind that which was the best uh, among of them but uh, i will later on dis discuss to dg sir about this uh, and uh, a gm sir also explained the conversion means of conversion and uh, on day 2 uh, the section wise meeting was held that uh, on that day we seen very um, the different different laboratories offered by our college and uh, the language lab was also offered though to uh, means enhance the english of our means uh, my uh, friends and uh, myself too so we can communicate easily and uh, english should not be a tough nut for communicating and we know we can actually use english as a medium of for conversation in the uh, college campus and uh, gm sir explained very much about that ki uh when the kolagat power plant was established uh, the people from different country regions combined and they could not communicate as only english was the uh, common medium between them to communicate the other languages many people were different different languages and uh, uh, used different different languages so they could not communicate between each other so so that uh, he explained the importance of a specific language means that is english on that day and uh, um um one of the main things i got learned from this session that passing 
is a very easy thing but uh, being called as a settled human being is a difficult, <laughs> difficult tough nut to break it yes uh, yes true true so uh, we should always go to means our uh, dreams see dreams are what you uh, means dream of uh, our um, dreams change this day by day means uh, if you are dreaming today that i will buy a new car and you achieve that and next day you will uh, dream that i will buy a helicopter or a private plane private jet so dreams change day by day but the target that being called a uh, man being called a uh, a human being uh, should means being called <laughs> actually i am not getting words because i am not prepared so much uh, but <laughs> being called uh, an established human being is the main motto of life i think that and uh, uh, many of the students i means uh, my elder brothers are have gone through the colleges and uh, many experiences uh, they all shared with me that uh, some of the students lag behind as they go on and uh, choose different things that are not good enough for the careers means some of the students go and uh, uh, just uh, uh, addicted to some different different kind of things that was a very bad uh, uh, that impress a very bad impression in their life and spoils their life so i will also request my uh, friends to not acquire any bad habits or very bad uh, addictions and uh, i think i should not tell, uh, tell about addictions what type of addiction that they could uh, understand by their own and around uh, mm -hmm. it's okay thank you uh, Uh, let us uh, go to the other friends if they want to tell yes. something. Yes. Rahul, thank you, Rahul. Thank you, sir. If any other students want to text and tell something, I would like to speak. Yes. Uh, so I'm Anushka Mandal from Kharagpur, and um, I'm from CSC. So this session was definitely uh, beneficial. session session for us and uh, like uh, like i realized this uh, school is the easiest phase of our life and like this tra transition is the transition is really tough for us and and uh, and the our college is definitely going to help in the transition because uh, because life after school is definitely going to tough and and i if if i i think i think that if uh, normal classes would have been started instead of this induction program then things like i would i wouldn't be familiar with all the teachers and who really did a great job by motivating us or inspiring us by any uh, in the in the best way possible so ultimately it is a very beneficial session for us and thank you so much thank you anushka uh, any other students because we have uh, very short time sir i want to speak sir yes abro please hello everyone uh, my name is abro bhattacharya i am from uh, ece uh, and uh, i want to say that uh, these four days when uh, uh, our teachers have uh, uh, told us uh, various sorts of things uh, about our college about our uh, about our college uh, legacy about our principles about our ethics and uh, the short counseling session was also given by uh, i think amala madam opula uh, opula uh, she's uh, oh, oh, sorry this opula charity the uh, college counselor yes okay okay sorry madam ha okay. uh, apala madam uh, so she uh, she said a very good example i guess it was uh, the pablo picasso story which i remember the most 
and uh, that was really good so in that uh, story uh, the moral was that we have to nurture our talents uh, very frequently to get a very used to what we want to do and uh, and uh, as you all know engineering is not only about engineering it is about eating it is also about everything else than engineering and uh, like those activities which are given in our mar activities and um, which was told yesterday by uh, our dear teachers and uh, i guess i have i will follow and i'll try to uh, try my best to follow all of those activities and uh, i'll also uh, want uh, the other guys from my department and others departments to uh, take participate uh, to uh, be participants in all of those activities and uh, uh, i rather not <laughs> just stretch my uh, words and uh, and i was uh, there could be some mistakes by in in my short speech uh, as i am not really that much prepared for this one so thank you sir madam and uh, thank you all of my uh, uh, year mates and uh, yes that's it sir thank you sir thank you now if there is any other uh, last person to uh, speak something i will take only one student if he or she wants to talk perhaps there is no other students so uh, ma'am ma i request uh, professor mira kunal ma'am to go for concluding speech okay okay thank you professor mondol uh, thank you beloved students so we have come to the end of a five day long induction program induction program is mandatory by aict and even in this lockdown time lockdown season or in this covid uh, times we have tried to create an online program for you and uh, i would like to congratulate professor deepak kumar mondol for having organized it in such a manner that i on, on behalf of this organizing team also as a member i feel happy that we have actually tried to offer our students a wide range of topics which might help them in this 48 month long journey in the college so those of you who are now joining remember it is just a 48 month long kind of uh, affair you have come into the college our students we've had so many batches and i have told you that we i have been here almost right from the beginning of the college i have seen all the batches and uh, by the way i am the hod of humanities and english some of you were ex uh, expressing your concern we have one of the best labs so it should not be an issue i have taught all the batches and they have worked hard and got the success you should do the same now uh, day one itself director sir addressed you register you met and along the way you met the hod you came to know about the mentoring all the important things that have been highlighted by aict mentoring and mook and ma maybe at a later stage professor gain will be sending you a list of those uh, topics which you can pick up whether it's a four week whether it's a eight week what are the courses which would really help you for mook and ma so those can be highlighted and i think Uh, Apala Ma'am's session also left a mark on you, and GM KTPS. I've told you that this is not an ordinary college. That somehow, some day, a businessman woke up and thought, "Okay, let me set up this college." This college was set up by Professor Shankar Shen, a don in engineering education. He was the power minister, and. He, it was his dream and uh, we are in the vicinity of this kolaka thermal power plant and we are located in the township and there is a close bond between us and of course remember the things the key issues that sir shared with you and also what 
other sirs have told you today also the tpo that is a very important cell because it looks after your training it looks after your placement but remember he or she who helps himself rises in life so the the college will be providing you help guidance tips ultimately it is your own hard work what you make in the next 48 months that is going to change your life and i think rahul made a very important point that yes it is easy to be an engineer but whether you have the proper values and we remember uh, things like you know the oaths for doctors but we forget that engineers to also have their own system of ethics so the code of ethics for engineers and all those things you will be picking up in the ai city and mark out given syllabus also and it is not merely the syllabus it will help you in many crucial decisions in your life because the higher up you go you will be taking some decisions which will affect not only your life but people around you so as an engineer ethical tools will be also very important tools just as managerial tools like gm sir said chanchal sir by the way also teaches you management uh, courses and there is another teacher also so who looks into the management side so all those things would be important aditya singh sir told you about ncc ncc also has a strong wing and nss again is an important feature in any engineer's life so within the 5 days i think you have got in a nutshell the path ahead and some of you are asking about when physical colleges will start well that will depend upon the government notification which we are hoping will come shortly but next week onwards and the mail will go to you tuesday onwards online classes will start for you for the first years online classes for physics chemistry maths and english okay so the links will be given to you from tuesday 24th of november online classes will be starting okay so markout still has not given any formal notification about the classes but our college taking into consideration the needs of our students we will be offering you the classes and the links will be sent to you okay and we expect that all of you will be taking it seriously okay all of you will be attending all our classes is it clear is it clear so with this i think professor mandol we are coming to the very last part of the yes the online classes we will give you the time we will give you the time the time table will be sent to you okay uh, it will be we will sh uh, share with you what books you need right now you don't need any books right now when we meet you in our classes we will tell you exactly what we are going to do what syllabus we are going to follow what are the uh, assignments in future or what are the books or sites that you may have to look up but tuesday onwards tuesday onwards let me tell you the classes are going to start whether macau starts it or not we will start the classes deepak mondal sir over to you sir thank you ma'am for summarizing this five days sip and inspiring words to our students thank you the students for joining in this program thank you all these faculty staff members administrative members for organizing this program successfully yes As madam has announced the new session will start from next week so again we will meet you virtually initially with the google meet so link will be sent by the respective faculty members before that you will get the routine time table also so with this i conclude here thank you thank you all of you for joining in this program and the yes. uh, deepak sir just let us also thank alok maiti and Uh, and people like him alok sir and others who have yes, given yes. the logistic supports yes, for yes. this entire 5 days a warm yes. thanks to our backup team thank uh, you thank all you, thank you ma'am thank you thank you thank so you we are closing yes. this program yes take care take care stay safe okay stay safe okay we